want to start the mic, please? It is, it is now 6.30, and we'll call the meeting to order. May we have the roll call, please? Chairman Colianos? Here. Mr. Bolton? Here. Dr. Root? Here. Ms. Sardoulis? Here. Mr. Tunstall? Here. Ms. Pronomitis, was that going to be? Is she, but she's an well, alternate. She's an alternate. Mm -hmm. I, she doesn't have to be okay. called. I didn't or know if she was called. She needs to vote, but I can. Okay. Ms. Pronomitis is here. Just like to recognize her. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Pronomitis is also here. <laughs> um, do we have any public comments? No? Okay. Uh, do we, uh, the board has any ex parte communication disclosure? Nothing from me. No? All right. Uh, may we please have the quasi judicial announcement and swearing in of speakers? Kim? Yes. This is a quasi judicial proceeding where the board acts as a, in a quasi judicial rather than legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the board's function to make the law, but rather to apply the laws already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. And I, I would appreciate it now if everybody who plans to testify, yeah, if anybody plans to give testimony at the hearing would please stand. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, we will now um, move to uh, an old case that we have, CA number 15. 114 KCQ Barbecue, 310 East Tarpon Avenue, in addition to the primary use and construction of new deck and ramp. May I hear from the city on that application, please? Yes, Chairman, members of the board. The applicant at this time is requesting a certificate of approval. They did come last month and they have returned. Uh, they have made a couple of changes on their application. So the ones that we are hearing tonight are a, an addition, a seven foot by 28 foot storage room with a hardy board lap siding to the primary use and construction of a deck and ramp on the west side of the structure. Again, this property is an example of commercial architect in the city of Tarpon Springs during the Spanish American War era. The structure has undergone some minor alterations but the majority of the architectural details remain and the overall historic massing is retained. The applicant is seeking a certificate of approval to construct a seven foot by 28 foot storage room to the primary use. The storage room will be constructed on a concrete floor, the wall two inch by four inch pressure treated wood and two inch by six inch pressure treated roof rafters. Hardy board lap siding with a 5V crimp sheet metal for the roof. On the west side of the structure, the applicant would like to extend the existing deck and add a ramp. The closing of the property will be in approximately two weeks from the date of this meeting. The current owner has not signed the affidavit required on the HPB application. 
According to the city attorney, the applicant can be heard, but the applicant must provide proof of ownership or the current owner must provide a signed affidavit prior to filing a building permit application. Since this case has already been heard, I'm just going to hit the high points um, mm -hmm. on some of the items. The proposed new construction is a storage room to the rear of the contributing structure. Uh, the proposed uh, addition will contain hardy board and a metal roof to be, to be consistent with what is already there. On page number four, you'll see that they have pine siding and hardy board where those two places meet. They're going to continue with the hardy board to the end, which is the um, the new structure that they want to add. So they're going to continue to use that harding, bo harding board because it's at the rear of the building. Mm -hmm. All right, back to uh, page two. Well, let's go on to page three now. Uh, the applicant would like to extend the existing deck on the west side of the structure together with the ramp. This ramp will extend outwards toward the rear of the property. And as you can see in the picture, I've put a couple arrows there so that you can see where they want to extend that. There will be no changes to the windows and the doors. The porch and ramp will be consistent with the existing porch. The size and mass of the building after the alterations are reflected, reflecting the building's original architectural style. The new construction on the side and to the rear is compatible to the structure in the surrounding area. The materials being used for the deck and ramp are the same as the existing porch and ramp. The addition to the rear will be consistent with the adjoining materials at the rear of the building and will not be seen from the front of the property. And then again, that's where I, I note the Harding board. Hardy board um, is consistent. Uh, page five, um, the changes to the building are for a deck and ramp and the storage. They're not attempting to create an earlier appearance than what's already there. They are consistent with the Secretary of Interior standard for rehabilitation and guidelines and also the LDC. Um, as identified in this area, there is no um, archaeological sites that we know of. Staff recommends approval on the condition that the applicant provides proof of ownership or has an affidavit signed by the current owner prior to filing for a building permit. For a 7 by 28 storage room addition with hardy board lap siding to the primary use and construction of a deck and ramp on the west side of the structure. The applicant um, has provided uh, some photos. They've also provided a material list of the items that they will be using for the new construction storage room. And that's on the first page of the material list. Two by four walls, two by six roof, hardy lap siding outside the walls to match the house. The metal roof will be a 5V crimp metal and the deck and ramp, they will be using the classic spindle and also the two by six pressure treated deck board. And then the last is the picture that has been revised um, to show what is there existing and what they would like to add. And that's it for staff. Okay, thank you. Uh, is now time we'd like to hear from the applicant. Any information you want to bring forward? I, I see that you have some examples. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, so you you don't need to add to it at all. No. Okay. Okay. Um, one of the board would like to see them if you wouldn't mind. Um, Do we have on record who we're receiving these materials from? Yes, from the applicant. Would you mind going ahead and stating your name and your address into the mic, please? Mike Kaiser, 793 Chesapeake Drive. Uh, 
Do we have anybody opposed to this um, application in the audience that would like to make a statement? Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. Do we have one, anyone supporting this application that would like to make a statement? Okay. Um, City, do you have anything else you'd like to add to this? I just appreciate that the applicants, oops, sorry. I just appreciate the, the work the applicants have gone into to bring the material to me. And I mean, we were seeing each other almost every day for a few days there, but um, we did get it all together and I appreciate their hard work. Okay. Um, do I hear from the board? Anyone would like to say anything about the application? I, I just have a question um, for, just for myself. So at this time, since our last meeting, um, you all have decided not to replace uh, anything else on the, the main body of the structure. You're going to focus. They need mm -hmm. to be a podium to be recorded. Yeah. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> no, we're not. We're just going to leave it like it is and just repair and paint. And uh, if any of the shingles, the, the cedar shingles, just be replaced with the cedar shingles. Okay. Just oh. for my personal clarification. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else from the board? I have a question for staff. Is the size, is the, the storage room, is that attached to the? It will be attached. So there's no restriction other than setback for size as far as square footage of the correct so they're not going to another board for a variance no they are not okay thank you uh, do I hear a motion from the board I'll make a motion to accept the application as it stands with second. the condition of ownership proof and, and David you second, second. Yeah. may I have a roll call please Mr. Tunstall yes Ms. Sar Sardulis? Yes. Dr. Root? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Ms. Kolianis? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your investment in Tarpon Avenue. Yes. <laughs> Okay, now we will turn to our next, uh, our new case, which is CA number 1605, the Unitarian Universalist Church, 57 Reed Street, uh, demolition of the Narthex, new construction to replace form room and stairs and a terrace, reopen doorways and windows and replace existing windows. May I hear from the city on this, please? This is a long one, so please bear <laughs> with us here. <laughs> We're doing several things. Uh, the property, the present structure was constructed in 1909 during the Spanish-American War era in the Gothic Revival architectural style. The block building features a cross gable roofline with a crenellated tower at the intersection. The Unitarian Universal, Universal, Sorry, I've said it so many times. Universal Church was the first chapel constructed in Tarpon Springs. The applicant is seeking a certificate of approval to demolish the added portion of the narthex that was not part of the original building. The demolition will allow for the entryway to be opened to the outside together with the two windows that were boarded up. The certificate of approval will allow for three other windows on the north side to be reopened and replaced with like original windows with four casements on the north, well, two on the north and two on the west, a total of four to be replaced with like windows. The three windows were uncovered during interior demolition and will re be replicated to match. The entryway to the bell tower has another door that was closed and will reopen and will be replaced with entryway doors and transoms that were found and will be replicated. New construction is also being requested with this certificate of approval. Where the narthex is currently located, the applicant is requesting monumental stairs to the entryway and a terrace. This will allow those attending to have more room entering the church and will maintain the architectural features of the church. 
New construction will allow for a door to be added to the addition of the church that was built in the 1950s per the agent. The entryway to the addition was in the narthex, therefore a new door will be needed to the outside off of the terrace. In keeping with the historic significance of its time, it will be constructed with a door that will retain and preserve its time of the 1950s. The form room was determined to be unsafe by the Tarpon Springs Building Development Director. The applicant has vacated the room and is in the process of demolition or demolishing the form room, leaving only the north wall. The north wall maintains the architectural design of the church. The certificate of approval will allow for the two windows and door in the front to be replaced with like windows and doors. Um, the new construction from, from the certificate of approval on the forum room will replace to its original footprint and style. The building will have a plaster finish and two windows on the east side. The addition is not visible from the road. The roof will change from a very small gable to a large gable. Per the design guidelines, the architect the applicant is requesting to replace the roof so that it will be in character with the architectural style of the church. So first we're gonna go through the review criteria for demolition of the narthex. And I'm just gonna go through the answer portion of that. The requested portion for demolition was added at a different time. Removing the narthex will allow for a portion of the original structure to be uncovered. That, if, I, if you wanna follow along with the pictures, it is the last, I believe last three pictures that you have in your packet, the large ones. Uh, these were postcards that um, the agent uh, gave to me to uh, show you how the original Narthex was, or there was not, and that's what's being uh, demolished at the time. I guess it's two pages. So I'm gonna go on, um, on page two with the staff report. Demolition of the narthex will allow for the doors on the vestibule, the bell tower, to be opened and allow the original entryway to be used. This will allow for the ambiance of the district to remain. Removing the narthex will allow that portion of the bell tower that was boarded up to be used again in its original design as shown below, together with the two windows on the south side of the building. Again, you have a picture of that in your packet. And I'm sorry, I should have, uh, the very last page of your staff report after page nine, there's a description page of each of the pictures that you have in your packet, if that, if that helps you. Okay, next slide. In the staff report, it shows that portion to be removed and then portions to be exposed after the demolition. And those are the same as the uh, postcards. The Gothic revival style of this church is not the only remaining example located in the historic district or in this city. The proposed demolition is only for that portion added later and not for the contributing church. So it's going to remain and maintain that Gothic revival because we're not touching any of that. It's just that Narthex building that's to the side. The use of the church will continue after improvements have been made for both services and a museum for the Ennis paintings. The demolition will not affect the original structure. The narthex currently blocks the entryway of the vestibule and two windows that were hidden in the walls. So if you go to page five, you can see where the windows were boarded up in the narthex. And so when they removed that, you could see those two windows that are shown on the postcards. So removing the narthex is not being requested to earn an economic return. The changes being requested allow the church to return to its original architecture. That's what I have on the demolition. Do you want to do comments now or just finish the whole report? So we'll go ahead and move forward. Uh, the new construction will be for the stairs and terrace leading to the church and the reconstruction of the form room. The alteration to the front of the church will be compatible with the adjacent contributing structures of similar character. Excuse me, what page are you on? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, page four. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's okay. Back I just and didn't forth. Know if you skipped. <laughs> 
We're on the review criteria. Got We're it. beginning with the new construction. The alteration to the front of the church will be compatible with the adjacent contributing structures of similar character located throughout the neighborhood. The new construction of the form room will be consistent with what is currently located on that site. So they're removing it and putting up a new one, same footprint as what is there. They just, per the city of Tarpon Springs, Tarpon Springs they had to remove that. It was uh, condemned. The changes to the contributing structure with the reopening and replacement of doors and windows will be consistent with the character of the building's original architectural style. The original door to the outside was located in the church's attic and the original transom was uncovered. The doors and transoms will be custom made to match the original doors and transoms. And the page five, that is what it will look like. Um, it was drawn for us so that we could see exactly what they're going to put there. On the set of pictures, let me get the correct one. It is um, number six is the original church door that they <coughs> located. And then number seven is what the transom looks like when they uncovered everything. And so those two, the door and the transoms will be replicated to look like the picture on page five. The windows will be replaced with insulated exterior vinyl as noted on the materials list. The applicant is replacing the windows with like design that are impact resistant per the 2014 Florida Building Code. And also on page five, you can see that the windows have been boarded up. Those will be opened. Uh, the open space is not being changed. The north wall of the forum room will remain and the new roof will have a large gable to keep it compatible with the roof, or with the church, the existing church. The rose window originally in the sanctuary will be installed in the gable as shown below. So right now, you, it's a smaller gable. You can see on the first picture. On the second picture, they are proposing to enlarge that gable so that it'll match with the original church and also to add the rose window, which you can see that rose window on one of the um, postcards over the two windows. <coughs> There's a rose window there in the center. <coughs> That's what they, they're going to place that in the new portion. The size and mass of the contributing structure after the alterations will be reflective of the building's original architectural style. The size and mass of new construction for the forum room will maintain the same style as originally constructed except for the roof. The building will have a plaster finish and two windows on the east side. The addition is to the side of the contributing structure that is not visible from the road. The roof will have a gable in order to be consistent with the facade of the room and complementary to the church. The applicant has been diligent about locating original materials in order to create a consistent architectural style and character. Pictures have been copied from the archives in order to determine the distinctive features. The original doors and windows were found and will be replicated in order to be consistent with the architectural style and character. The forum room will be constructed to match the existing room footprint and original style. Two windows will be added along the east side wall and the siding will be rebuilt with plaster as shown. The north wall will remain and the windows and door will be replaced to replicate the existing windows and door. The gable will be constructed to be consistent with the existing gable on the church. After removing the narthex and exposing the entryway to the bell tower and the two windows located on the south side, the removal will also expose the addition at the rear of the building. The addition was constructed sometime during the 1950s with a different architectural style. Changes will not be made, but a door will be added in order to enter that portion of the church from the terrace. The doors will conform to the style during that era, recognizing and respecting the significance of that time period. The renovations of the contributing structure meet the Secretary of Interior <coughs> Standard for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings. The proposed project conforms to the bill's objectives and policies of the comprehensive, comprehensive plan and no known architectural sites will be impacted. Staff recommends approval of the application for demolition of the narthex 
new construction of a form room, stairs, and a terrace, reopen and construct doorways and install doors, and reopen and construct windows and install, construct windows and install windows. Uh, the applicant has provided, as we've gone through a few of them, several pictures of what the building looks like now, and I've included those along with the list. There is also the notice of condemnation of the form room by the building department director. The applicant has also provided us with a material list, and I hope you enjoy this as much as I did, because as <laughs> I, I was able to go in and tour the building, and where they had removed some of the walls that were there, they found these beautiful windows, and that's um, A, on your materials list and they are going to be replicating these windows and it has I um, they've included all of the material numbers and things like that but I wanted to show you what they look like um, so they've added all of that information for you on the material list these these are custom made they do have the Anderson windows is people that are be going to be doing this, but they are custom made to look as they do in the materials list. Uh, the rose window is on the last page, or yeah, on the last page of the windows, and then the doors are also listed. And then we have the set of plans, the demolition and construction plans that the applicant submitted. And that is it for staff. Oh, very nice, thank you. <laughs> Um, is now time to listen or to hear from the applicant who would like to speak? I don't know what you would like to ask, but I can answer any questions. Thank you. If you could give your name and address, please. My name is Renee Torres. I live at 400 Grand Boulevard, a block from the church. And have you been sworn in this evening? Yes. I will say that this has been a labor of love. My profession was director of design for a planning and engineering firm where I was the historic preservation officer and served as expert witnesses on boards, on city board, planning boards, so. The <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like to add to um, the application? I think it's all there. Okay, I mean, the idea has there. been to really to put this building back together because it was sadly uh, maneuvered over the years. And, uh, and then termites being what they are here and uh, rain coming off of the roof essentially destroyed that forum room uh, to mm -hmm. a point where uh, it needed to be condemned and rebuilt. How long do you think it'll take for renovation? To restore, uh, to yeah. reconstruct? Well, we're in the midst now of getting bids, mm -hmm. and it's really a simple project because it's not, you know, the, the forum room will be a block building. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and things go up here incredibly fast when they get going. Uh, I suspect we will be back in by uh, December of the year. Yeah. Provided we have all of our ducks in a row and our financing for all of this because it's going to be certainly extensive. Just to clarify, are, are you refabricating every door and window that is shown in the materials list? Are those all being built? Well, they have new? to because, well, the primary reason for rebuilding things as opposed to using the original uh, mm -hmm. materials is that uh, the paintings are our legacy sure. and they have to be in an environment that is protected and I think for the longest time the congregation felt that by having the place be a tomb or you know 
totally solid. They wouldn't be, and that was quite erroneous because in fact there's just masonite wall with a little uh, stucco on it, and if we had a hurricane, the paintings would actually blown through. Uh, so what we're doing is really putting the building in shape so that it will take, and the doors that are there are not by code hurricane resistant sure. doors. So we're gonna have everything yeah. built to, you know. So that, so all the doors are being fabricated new, yes. essentially, and the windows that are being replaced are yes. new. The rose-shaped window as well on the gable? The, sh the rose window, we're probably going to try and use the same window yeah. and put essentially a shield on the outside, mm. like, I've because that, yeah. uh, the building had four rose windows initially, mm -hmm. and then there was a modification where they created essentially four bump outs. Mm -hmm. And when they bumped out to make the church slightly bigger, they, they blocked all the rose windows except for the one that remains. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when we were up in the attic, I found a rose window and, you know, trying to figure out how the church worked in you know, previously. So the older windows will essentially, or if there's any, st I see the stained glass, is it, you're gonna have like an uh, impact resistant piece of glass that's yeah. gonna cover those and yeah. retain the look. And we will Excuse return me. the windows to color, which at one point they painted them all black. Oh, wow. So they wouldn't let light in because they feared that the paintings <coughs> would be affected by light. And you know, there were just some beautiful things done. <laughs> well, you know, old city hall, they painted the window sills and everything. They painted the window sills and everything a peach color. Oh. So it could have been worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, ours were black. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, we'll ask if there's anyone opposed to this application in this large audience. <laughs> And would anyone like to speak supporting this application? Go ahead. You want? Okay. Go ahead, Bob. Yes, please go ahead and raise your right hand. Okay. Do you promise to tell the truth on the matters before the Tarpon Springs Heritage Preservation Board here this evening? I, cer I certainly do. I so Thank swear. You. Um, I'm Reverend Robert Murphy. I'm the minister at the church, very new to this area, and uh, live at 1706 Palomino Drive, if you want that for the record. Um, I'm very grateful for your support. This is indeed the oldest church in Tarpon Springs, one of the oldest in the area. It's been part of this community for well over 100 years, and we try to serve the whole community. The, church has helped the homeless, it helps the hungry, it reaches out to people of different faith traditions. Um, we hope that you come to visit us as the church is reestablished, and we'll invite all of you to the celebration as we reopen, uh, because we want to be a home for all people. So your support is very much appreciated. And as Renee has said, we're concerned about hurricanes. This is a very environmental-minded congregation. And we have something called the Green Sanctuary Program. So we're very sensitive to what's happening in the environment. And uh, we do want to be helpful to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> does the city have anything else they'd like to add? No, I, again, I just wanted to thank Mr. Torres. It was a pleasure working with him and being able to walk through the church and see the original parts that are there. It was made me love being part of the Historic Preservation Board even more. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to thank him. And as you've seen, we had a complete packet <laughs> with what he submitted to us. It's definitely a model application. <laughs> um, do I have comments from the board? I do. I'd like to hear a little more about the materials being used on the new construction, um, primarily the uh, there's a couple of uh, windows on either side of the, the, the doors. I'm assuming that the, the double door that's shown on the new construction is um, the storefront door that's shown. Is, is that correct? The storefront door is shown on the portion that was hidden. The narthex was in front of it or is in front of it, so you can't really see it. But when they remove that, you're going to see that portion, and that's where those storefront doors are going. I think you're talking about this. Correct. This will now come forward, and that will be a standard aluminum storefront door because 
This is being recorded, and what you're saying is really important. So could you speak into the microphone? Thank you. Yes, by taking the Norfix away, we now have a situation where we need to still connect to our social hall, which is this building that runs into the church. And this door is, what is there now is essentially some little uh, Dutch doors with glass panes above and, you know, frou-frou uh, trim. And uh, they're interior doors, so they obviously are not going to be. But the, the idea is to put uh, essentially a storefront door, an aluminum storefront door that will match all the other aluminum that's in that part of the building because this addition all around has the same. Okay, and what's the style of the windows that will be farther down in that building? Then we're just there are no windows being changed here. Oh, okay, so this is, this is existing and the building that's coming down is in front of that right now? Yes. All right, that was not clear to me. There's a building that projects right. out and that's gone and that's On page eight of the staff report, you'll see those storefront doors. Right. Yeah. With the, with We're showing this as a typical door that will be used for the storefront door. Okay. And then um, <clears throat> I was a little confused by the drawing uh, because it did show the uh, existing roof line of the that north yeah. side. Are you going? Is it going to have like a a, um, a double roof line? It's going to be. It actually is a pent roof right now. The the roof line of the building. That's on page six. In your packets, um, five. You see this <coughs> this angle uh, is the edge of the current block wall that matches the sanctuary. And what we propose is to do a 12 by 12 pitch, which would replicate the pitch of the church, serve to properly do a saddle between the two roofs and shed the water off, because that's in part the problems that cause the building to sink by not having, um, you know, one gutters and two proper pitch roof. And so the new, the new, essentially we'll have two walls. We will have the facade remaining historic, and from behind it will rise a secondary wall on which that rose window will be okay, in so you place. Do, you, you will show those two roof lines? Like oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. The pent roof will remain okay. as a vestige of, of the front wall. Are there any other uh, comments or questions from the uh, board? The original stairs going into the, uh, up onto where the Narthex originally existed are being covered or demolished? No, they will have to be demolished. <coughs> As a matter of fact, they will probably be demolished by the sinkhole remediation that is taking place. And that's how this whole thing grew. Uh, because this is all buried underneath, uh, you know, the narthex comes in here and, and then they built a secondary set of stairs, so there's mm -hmm. stairs coming out of stairs, which any, as much as this is quaint, it's right. certainly not legal by today's codes of entering a building uh, 
and then having a step into it. So um, the idea was to maintain that narthex feel and then extend it as a terrace so we would have, you know, a, a, an approach and a place for weddings to take place and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Do I hear a motion from the board? I'll make a motion to accept the application as presented. And just to clarify, the maker of the motion is doing it for all the work required, correct? So the demolition and um, all the new additions and renovations. Yes, as the package has been submitted, which does cover all that. Okay. I'll second the motion. Okay, thank you. May I have a call? Vote, Mr. Tunstall? Uh, yes. Ms. Sardoulis? Yes. Dr. Root? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Chairman Kolianos? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll no, now go to staff comments. All right, the last time, uh, well, several times we have been asked about our applications and what we require the applicants to present to us. So what I've done is I've taken all of the applications that we use for Heritage Preservation Board and I don't know if you want to go through them step by step now, if you want to take them home and look at them and then come back and we can discuss them. It's kind of up to you. I've also attached the portion of our land development code, which is the heritage preservation for you all to have a copy and what we do and how we have our findings of facts, our appeals, um, everything that we do for heritage preservation is in that packet. And then, like I said, we do have our applications. The first one is the certificate of approval. So whenever someone comes before the board, this is the first application that they will um, present to us along with the information we request. We have the economic hardship exemption. Uh, we also have the appeal application and then if someone is interested in designating their property as historic property, we also have that application. So I take it from there. I'm not sure how you would like to move forward with this, but we are here to listen to any questions or comments you may have and how to prepare our cases to present better before you. Um, you just need to let us know what you want from us. Uh, a lot of times we are asked about, well, did you ask them to give you this or this, that. On page two of four of the certificate of approval, these are the items that are on the application. So if there is something else you would like to have the applicant present, and please make sure that we have to also follow the guidelines of the land development code. What is in this code is what we need to follow. So. If you're asking for something that's outside of the code, that's where the conflict comes. So I'll turn it over to the board to let me know what they okay. want. Okay. <laughs> um, has everyone had a chance to look at these applications? Uh, would you like to discuss them in length? I, I've perused them, but I have a question about 
something. Okay. Sure. On the second page for the items needed. Okay. Um, the application we just reviewed, they provided photos and material lists. Um, obviously, they couldn't provide samples because it's being fabricated. But those are things that we regularly ask for and, in fact, have deferred approval or moving on an application because those things are missing. But they're not in a they're not really requested in an application. Are those outside of the guideline to, to require a materials list, photos, and samples? Well take a look at your land development code. Page seven is where it begins. Page seven of the code or of page the, seven of, of the, the code. Um, it's titled Heritage Preservation, Article Seven. Page it's the last portion of the packet. Page seven, because I've got a page seven. It has okay, the certificate exhibit of approval. A. Okay. Yes, it's under certificate of approval. These are the items that you can ask for uh, beyond exhibit A. It starts on page seven, but the other portion is on page 11. Michelle, do you know the date of this document? Because at one point we were asked for comments and uh, it was supposed to be updated. I just don't know if, if we're looking at, if, if that update ever made, was made. The last date of an ordinance done for heritage preservation is 2010. No, nope, didn't get it. If you look under each section, it'll show you the last, um, the additions to the land development code and it'll give you the ordinance number well in section h it says the application for a certificate of approval shall be made on a form provided by planning and zoning department and shall be accompanied by such plans drawings materials photographs or other information described in the proposed alteration so that would seem to put us within the guideline or within the boundaries to ask for those things and I would like to see that added to the application so that when people come, we're not surprising them by asking them for those items. We can add that on there. And what number were you looking at? I'm sorry. H? H page 11. <coughs> it's on page, page 11. 11. Page okay, 11, there we go. H, I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's so fine. Paragraph H. Section 109. And I would ask the board if there's other items that we've asked for that, you know, we felt were necessary that I may have missed that we need to add to that. Well, this isn't terribly descriptive, but it is very inclusive, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is any materials that can be seen from the road or are going to change what they're putting on a historic building pretty much need to be brought with the application. Do they get a copy of these guidelines when they come for the application? They get a copy of the application and a copy of the, um, oh, I'm sorry, the standards for review, which is on page 404. Um, I think that we really should have um, copies of the design guidelines handed out to the applicants because th then they won't be surprised, you know, by what we're talking about in terms of um, <coughs> materials and historic materials and um, they'll see samples of what a good restoration and a bad one is and that I think might trigger some ideas in their own minds and might be a helpful tool for them, save you some trouble down the road, bearing in mind that they do need to be updated, but you know, until there's something better. <clears throat> Under page um, seven, where they're talking about the certificate of approval and 
whether it goes before the HPB board or just for, for review by staff. There's several of these um, different items that are blank um, on the, you know, the, the little, yeah, the spreadsheet here. And so I've got question marks whether or not um, those need to be filled in or not. Like well, on where for, page for eight, it says parking lot, and there's nothing there. Uh, porch and replace and repair, and there's nothing. Um, it's a heading, so it says parking lot, and then you go underneath it, resurface only, no ah, additional area, okay. staff, staff, new or expanded. So on that one, that's, that's a heading. The next one is roofs enclosed with parapet walls, exempt, and then it talks about the different things on the roof, satellite dish, antenna, security bars. Okay, I, I see what you're talking about now. Okay. Will somebody understand that when they're going through this? <laughs> we, maybe if we highlight that for them or something. Right, that like, the, like okay, them. this is the heading and this these are right. the different right. categories underneath it. Is there anywhere that we could also address uh, at what point the severity of deterioration requires replacing a replacement of materials? I mean, we addressed that in the last meeting a, a little bit. Um, I don't know if anybody else has thought about that much since then. But as far as whether there would be a required engineer, contractor, whether that would be a requirement or if the actual property owner or applicant could make that decision based on a set of criteria? Or? If, if it's in this code, we can require it on the application. If it's not in the code, it would have to be an, amend, an amendment to the land development code. And then that would, we could do that, but that mm -hmm. would be a different process. Yeah. When do we repair windows? When are they beyond repair? Mm -hmm. That type of thing. Yeah. I think that's, so we can't, uh, I as a cursory looking at it, I didn't see anything in the land development code, but I think it's a piece of on there. Well, our, our design guidelines say that if over 50% of the like say windows are deteriorated, then replace all of them. But other exactly, than that. that is found in our design review guidelines. And under windows, it says if 50% or more of the windows are deteriorated or missing, then the wholesale replacement of all windows is permitted, provided that new windows shall match the key design elements of the original windows. So, some of the things that are in our land of it, development code are in our historic guidelines. Right. And who makes the determination? which, um, you know, as to the windows being beyond repair, a uh, licensed contractor, or um, is that what you're that's, Yeah, to? that's sort yeah. of what I'm uh -huh. getting so at. Who, um, I guess whose professional testimony do we, for lack of a better word, do we accept as an expert? They would need to have an engineer or someone provide that to staff. Is there, I didn't, everything I read when I looked at this before tended to lean towards the appearance or, uh, you know, that it would appear to be the same uh, period. I didn't see anything specifically addressing the actual material itself. And I know that we've made recommendations or asked about using the uh, secondary um, market wood and things like that. But I don't see anything in here that says it all talks about the go, appearance go to page of. 12, David. Is that, thank you, that's what I'm asking and for. And look at um, paragraph seven. Thank you. So for the 
example you just made, mm -hmm. they could affect a repair, but they would need to use the like materials, which is where the secondary market materials would come in. Which is part of the Secretary of Interior standards. I'm sorry? It's part of the Secretary of Interior standards. Yeah. I guess it would be what we consider distinctive architectural features. That would be the definition we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Is it? Mm -hmm. As I'm reading item seven here, at the very bottom, um, new materials should replicate the material being replaced in composition, design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. So. I'm thinking about synthetic materials. Uh, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, the guidelines of the Secretary of the Interior is to use, for example, wood, not hardy board, to replace. Well, if you notice the date of this, hardy board may not have been an available in a, material. Available mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it points to the fact that these guidelines need to be updated, mm -hmm. something that we've mm -hmm. been discussing. Right. I guess, um, I don't you know if you want to reserve this for staff comments or I mean, uh, board comments. We should discuss this now. But, um, is there a time when a synthetic material is acceptable? This seems, right now, this, this doesn't answer that. Yeah. Well, well, for instance, with the windows example, um, there is specifically say in our design guidelines and Secretary of Interior standards, I believe that vinyl is acceptable if you're, you know, if it's in the same um, look as what it's replacing. And again, if you're replacing, you know, if, if over 50% of the windows are deteriorated, then you can go ahead and do all of them in the vinyl. So yeah. um, at the same principle then, the way we, we had allowed vinyl windows and to meet the hurricane we had mm -hmm. standards, mm -hmm. we could accept a hardy board as a appropriate siding substitute? Yes. And I, I would argue in cases that, you know, when we're trying to preserve some of these historic properties, using a hardy board product or vinyl windows would be in the best interest of the overall look and, you know, the, the look of the historic downtown, you know, it's preserving and maintaining rather than replacing with the same materials that have deteriorated over time. And also, for me, part six of the interior standards, it's so open-ended, it's hard to define exactly what everyone, <coughs> for me, part six of the which standards is, page 10 of my packet that I, and it just says where possible materials that are able to be found and there's no real definition of what what we've made possible you know or what what is possible for the actual I guess just a little bit more clarity for them like similar to what we dealt with in the last meeting discussing the sh uh, shingles I think it was that's just something that I've been thinking about since the last meeting. Yeah. Trying to actually well, do some <coughs> research on, but there's not, not every city does have clear cut mm -hmm. guidelines on that that are updated, so it's hard to compare and contrast. But those materials are, are newer and obviously really superior to what was used at the time. Well, the idea I, of historic preservation <laughs> is to preserve the historic <laughs> building. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So right. <clears throat> I, I have to object to that myself. Yeah. Um, I think that there are, are uh, there's a, a point in time when, yes, you have to say this is deteriorated beyond that, repair. That's what I'm referring to, sorry. I, didn't, I don't mean actually replacing on a whole, whole scale. I mean repairing. Substance, like for example, I mean, like the, the vinyl windows. Um, can we allow vinyl windows and then not allow hardy board? Can we do that? I think they're two different things. Two I different think things. It, I think they're two different things, and also there's a such thing as 
there are, like you said, secondary uses of materials that are available on the market mm -hmm. to repair um, siding on buildings. Mm -hmm. um, can I just say, I think we have a really good case to kind of shows what will probably continue to happen if um, we don't figure out how to meet people uh, somewhere in this because what we had um, with an applicant recently, am I allowed to mention application that's already done and over with, was the uh, KCQ barbecue where they're making an investment in downtown, purchasing a historical home to make a restaurant out of it, trying, they really wanted to clean it up and, and make it look great, but then the standards that we were starting to tell them that they might have to achieve became uh, financially and just encumbersome for them. So they withdrew all of that part of the application. They're gonna make minor little repairs on the building. And now you have a historical home that's not being preserved, but it's gonna continue to deteriorate. So we've gotta figure out, I've gone to Hyde Park, to Amelia Island, Savannah. They all have sections about use of hardy board, use of secondary materials, um, and have figured out a way to incorporate it. I, I think this goes back to um, the city not updating things until they get a grant for it. The city's got to set some money aside to handle these things, even if we don't get a grant. Somebody's got to, we've got to be able to sit down. I think that's where we need to start. We can talk about what we want to see change, but we're talking about design guidelines. It has to be a very formal process to make these changes. And it is our citizens are suffering right. because well, we don't have a document to support what's currently happening in our in our world. Yeah, these these are almost 20 years old now, and yeah. as we've seen, the materials that are available today aren't even addressed within the guidelines. Um, um, we are we we are we're, our hands are really really tied if if, if we're trying to if our job here is to interpret what we can do within the guidelines of what we have, there's a lot we cannot do. I agree. I think I brought up um, at our last meeting that with the attorney that we are allowed to, or maybe it was even with the planning and zoning um, department, that we could actually take one section at a time and, uh, and update it. You know, we don't have to wait until everything's done, but something that's really becoming up again and again to address that. and. Um, several people mentioned looking at other um, design guidelines from other cities has no sense in reinventing the wheel if there's right. something that people like you know so the question is is how does our need get put into the um, into the consciousness of the people who are making decisions about the workload the cost the application of funds etc to update these well I don't think it really takes money I think it takes in the, in the sense of, unless you're talking about staff time, but now this is the first time we've had a full staff in planning and zoning for, so, you know, in recent memory. So Does uh, the staff take this back and act on it, or does the staff need to take this forward somewhere else to get approval to act on it? Or do we as a board need to put some sort of statement forward to the um, city leadership to let them know that there's a significant issue here. I mean, what is our process to get Tell that the department. What you can do is you, we can discuss it and talk about what we would like to see done, the, you know, changes being made, and then we can move that forward, take it to, you know, the city manager, to my director, and then we can take it forward as an LDC amendment. Well, there's, there's a significant amount of work that needs to be done to go and extract from other communities who have successfully incorporated these types of things into their code so that we can review them and make suggestions or, you know. Um, is, is it possible now, since th this, this one is problematic, it comes up constantly. Can isolate number seven and craft something? Well, I'd like to interject what I had brought up from an expert from the Division of Historical Resources last week or last month. 
and asked to have it included in the minutes so everyone could read it completely through. And she disagrees with replacement unless it's an absolute economic hardship mm -hmm. with Hardy Board. And she says, um, I, I can't hardly see this because it's in blue, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, in light of the replacement with the original appropriate pine board siding with a modern engineered material is inappropriate. And she goes on, especially if only certain sections versus the entire exterior envelope needed replacement. And uh, yes, the Hardy board mimics wood board siding and has a concrete component that increases its lifespan, but unless the contractor uh, put on hardy board that match the profile and height of the former pine board, it will virtually look different. And if you would look at actually the, the original siding on these boards that are, they have like a curvature at the top and then they go mm -hmm. down. They are mm -hmm. not just a flat plank board. Mm -hmm. And that's what people keep bringing to us as a hardy board, it's a flat plank. The, the original siding are not flat mm -hmm. plank. Mm -hmm. They're they're curved. They're mm -hmm. totally different. Now, if they have a hardy board like that, I haven't seen it yet. But anyway, she goes on and she disagrees. She feels that it it um, um, hurts the integrity of the structure. And although she wouldn't take it away, the contributing. Um, status of it, she says that it definitely damages the integrity of the, the, you know, so where do we stand as a historic preservation board? We <coughs> think we need to consider also expert advice from people that are, you know, in that position. She's a historic preservation supervisor for survey and registration. The, the, the point here, though, is that we are going to be seeing applications oh, more and more, for this. I'm sure. And yes. If they can demonstrate economic hardship, which is really getting easy because cost of renovations is expensive, mm -hmm. you know we're we're fighting a losing battle um, on that front. So at least having guidelines that we can work with, as well as it's not a surprise to the applicants, they know what they have to step up to, you know. And it's it's not a surprise when they go to purchase a historic structure in a historic district, the standards are going to be held to. I mean, mm -hmm. I, that should be very clear, Whatever but it's decide. not. My, my fear, just, I've only been here for two meetings, but I would hate to see a pattern where people feel like they need to come with less information and because out of fear to, of, you know, the problems that we're gonna come up with. with the, I, I've, I've, I've just been researching other cities since the last meeting and I've grew up in St. Augustine, which has not I mentioned last week, they give you a list. I mean, not, not there's not definitive information on the um, Hardy Board. I wish there was, but that is definitely a gray zone for different cities. Um, but they give you a list of the different roofing materials that are UL listed, that are currently sold on the market, and they tell you where to find them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we could just give a little bit more information to people that are thinking about buying a historic property so that they're not in a, at a total loss for what to do next when they want to re re renovate or, or repair. You know, um, I, it just, I, I saw that 20 pages just of different types of roofing material that are adequate for all the different historical eras of, you know, in that city. I thought that was interesting. But again, I couldn't find a definitive answer on the Well, is on that something board. you want to share with the staff so that the staff can share with the rest of us? Yeah, well, I printed well, out the first 80 pages. I know, it was over 100. I looked at sorry, it. Sorry. St. Augustine, I found, was because of the age of their structures being so much older mm -hmm. that they broke it down into different. Exactly. And, and, and so it didn't compare. But I looked at areas like High Park has one because mm -hmm. they're homes and sh their wood frame vernacular is very similar to ours mm -hmm. and I thought they had a, a pretty comprehensive one mm -hmm. and then Amelia Island I looked at theirs because mm -hmm. um, I when I visited there I'd noticed that their buildings were similar to ours and their homes were similar to ours so 
I thought those maybe smaller um, mm -hmm. municipalities rather mm -hmm. than looking at St. Augustine yeah. or Miami, because uh, I started in St. Augustine, I looked at it, I was like, There's well, a lot of this is just too yeah. much. Yeah. It was yeah. uh, over 100 pages to try and sift yeah. through, and I just couldn't. Um, I was like, the, half of it was irrelevant based on the age of the structures. To, to answer your question, I, 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 would, I enjoy doing research like that, and I will definitely email any information I find that I feel like is relevant to um, whoever wants it. Yeah. Well, you and have I, to to the staff. I, you know, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I meant, yeah, to the staff. It's going to be good. Well, I, I guess I'm bringing it up again. Um, can we focus on this particular issue and um, come up with a, do a little bit of research on just this issue and that doesn't require changing everything else just so that it's not such a Just the Hardy Board issue? Just number seven. Is that anything, just, just to be practical, you know, we can't change all of this, obviously, but just focus on this for now. I know I'm making it a little too simplistic, but. I'm sorry. You have to start I somewhere. Have, that, yeah. was, that was my suggestion. That that, that way, I mean, that was my suggestion to find. Some, to, I mean, I mean, I'm agreeing with you. Seven. But. I mean, just go to seven and um, have a discussion and look at other these examples and consider the expert that you brought to us and make a decision mm -hmm. and then present it. This would have to be approved by um, the city manager's office, the commission. Or? Well, it would have to go to the, the planning and zoning board. Okay. Right. When we do. Because it's part of the land development code, it doesn't just go up to the Board of Commissioners, it goes up to the Board of Commissioners with a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Board. And what you'll remember from the demolition uh, uh, ordinance that we had worked on, um, that's kind of where it ended because they recommended against it. Okay. So you don't have to just get it through there, you got to basically get it through uh, two additional but we can start here and oh, talk yes. about it and work about it and get it all straightened out question. exactly what you want it to say, and then we would move it to the different boards. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, well, that, that's kind of what my thinking was. Just so we've got something to, you know, we can decide in an agreement with ourselves here as to what we want, how we want it to go, and then submit it for further review and. When you say work on number seven, are you essentially <clears throat> saying that if we could bring some similar information to that, like like basically UL listed products that are currently available that match? Actually interpreting what this means, right. I think. Interpreting what mm -hmm. it means. What is a distinctive architectural feature? Is it First. siding? Is it the, gotcha. uh, what, what, you know, yeah. is it the windows? Is it the casement? Is it what, what are we? Mm -hmm. Including in that, and in the guidelines yeah. for materials, is there a party board that has a more true, you know, it's rounded? A, well, it's a the profile of the board is profile. like this. That's the word I was looking for. Right. And so when it laps, you have right. this. But yeah, it's more curved. And and it's more right. curved, yes. and so and I I don't know that I've ever seen party board because it would have to be very thick. And then find other sources for. So in other words, what you're wanting is to give people some alternatives if they want to repair or replace um, some deteriorated features or the whole envelope. Just let, let, basically letting them know what they can expect when they come here. Yeah. No hardy board ever, too bad, forget it, or yes, if it's this sort of design or, or, or instead acceptable is a secondary product or um, mm -hmm. new siding, new wood siding that exactly replicates what's there. Whatever we decide, just so folks know, mm -hmm. and it, I think it would be easier for us and easier for them and uh, 
But who's going to do this research? I know you've started some of it. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, because we it can't discuss. Have to go staff right. and we right. can't discuss but among ourselves, you know, what's, yeah. you know, so. So if we find something we feel is meaningful, we send it to staff, and then it comes back to us in our packet for the next meeting. True, we can discuss it now. We can talk about what you want to see in this now and we can make some notes and then we can put something together and bring it back to you and if you don't like it we can make some other changes and i mean there may be some design guidelines that already have it in there like david was saying uh, about hyde park or something mm -hmm. see what they have it might not have to reinvent it might be a lot easier than, than you think does like this says we always say we don't deal with color which is great i don't think we should but this says including color so Thank God we haven't had to deal with color, but this says we do. So I think it just the whole thing needs to be visited. We don't deal with painting. I know that, but I don't know what that refers to as in color. Okay. Design, color, texture, other visual qualities. It's, it's in there. I mean, that's like. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, our ordinance, we don't deal with color at all. I know that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw a house get painted on Grand Street, top to bottom, in purple, not too long ago. Yes. <laughs> yes, we don't, have any, we don't have any influence on that. Just, I, have to, I, have to just, <laughs> I have to excuse myself. I have to leave um, before you guys are finished because I have another meeting that I couldn't change. So I don't, you don't need me. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Monahan. Well, um, so Sorry. we're going to leave it at this, that we're going to send to Michelle any information that we research and find so we can discuss this at the next meeting. We can do that. And if you have any questions, if you see anything else um, that you feel I need to add to it or you don't want to bring me a sample or do anything, <laughs> Please, I'm open and you all have my email address. Uh, regarding the paint, um, in this, in uh, the exhibit A, under paint, it says it's not reviewed. Okay, good. Either mm -hmm. by HPB or by staff, so they can go out and paint whatever they want, Purple House. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I probably shouldn't say that on TV, we don't want it. <laughs> One of the things we can do now is make that change on the application, though, because that does not need to go before board. you need a motion board. for that? Yes. Okay. Would the chair hear a motion? Uh, and what is the motion, please? I would like to move that we make a change on our current application for certificate of approval to include a materials list, photos, and samples. Do I hear a second for that motion? As three different bullets. Materials. Absolutely. I second the motion. Do we have a roll call, please? Mr. Tunstall? Uh, yes. Ms. Sardoulis? Yes. Dr. Root? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Chairman Kolianos? Yes. Are there any further comments on any topic? I just think as a board member, it's, it's an interesting balance between um, helping people make uh, improvements to their home, but also retaining the historical, um, preserving the historical nature of our community. And it's, a, it's just a definite, um, balance we need to walk and uh, remember that we're we're also serving the community and we don't want to um, we want to maintain the history of our community but we also want people to want to invest in the community and and make it as simple as possible but yet still retain the historical nature and I think that's what we're struggling with right now is finding that balance are we on board comments finish that comment. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'd like to, to just make one observation on that. I was really happy to see that our alternate was given a seat at the table this week. Yes, uh, me as well. serves as an alternate to be able to ask questions and to be recognized uh, by the public as part of our board. As we see, we have recurring applications and um, the alternates making an effort to keep abreast um, might want to ask questions to clarify position should they be called upon to vote. Thank you for coming, Leah. Thank Any other board comments? And this meeting's adjourned. Mike off? Yes, sir.